Hi everyone. Thank you for watching my videos and for supporting my channel. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. It's free and it really helps my channel to grow and to thrive. Thank you. We're back at it. We're back to tackle all the problems of the world. Yeah. Yes. So thank you guys for your excellent questions, by the way. Right, right, right. It was yeah, sort so of, uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, Andre and I talked yesterday day about getting a date, and I forgot that I did it for today. And I'm thinking I still had more time, and I over there lazy on the couch eating Cheetos. And suddenly I said, Oops, it's today. So I had to run and brush my hair and stuff. So, <laughs> right, right. Okay, so we do have some flags here. Uh, every, the first question is everybody's wanting to know if you can give us a little brush up on Kamala again. Well, I'm sure you've heard me say repeatedly for more than really all these years that Kamala's chart this year was at minimum going to be a great asset to Biden, which I felt made it you know, a win for Biden. Yeah. But unfortunately, Biden didn't make it because this is like the logic where in astrology, you can look at a potential outcome. Like his chart, Biden's chart in November is better than Trump's chart, but it's not as much better as it would have been in 2020 when he won. I mean, he has more problems this year. And one of those problems, think of it this way. It's like, imagine that you are looking at a chart of an athlete and you see that he's going to be in a, he or she will be in a big competition in December, but, and you look, well, it looks pretty good in December, but then you look in June, which is way before December, and there is a potential problem, which in his chart, which causes an injury, which means he can't compete in December. So then December now turns out to be a different thing. Biden's chart is, is uh, pretty good at the end of the year, enough to enjoy the situation, you know, then, but he's no longer able to run, right? So Kamala, the chart is the same. You know, if I said the chart was good as a partner, it's good for her as well, right? And yeah, her chart, she's going to beat him. She's going to beat this guy. I'm telling you, and you kept saying, the, that's why we thought, you know, Biden, yay, because you said, I don't know, but Kamala's real good post-election. Her Definitely. Are well, okay, and there's more than that. I mean, Kamala... Kamala's chart defeats his. But the other thing is that he doesn't win against anybody. That chart is not a winning chart. You could put a donkey there and he would lose. It's so just even that, if Biden won, uh, Biden, would, Biden would have won. Biden would have won had he been able to run. But Biden, you know, really got on the wrong side of the Saturn. And that's totally understandable when you're an 81-year-old man and you're, you know, you're looking frail, you're retired and so on. That's lethal Saturn energy. And everything coalesced against him and so that doesn't mean he's a bad president no he's been a great president it just means that his communication abilities have really dropped you notice now that kamala is making the case more clearly right and she's getting a lot of support very quickly this, you know this tells you that the chart is probably doing well if her chart was not doing well people would not be supporting her this quickly and she wouldn't be drawing in hordes of money, you know, record-breaking hauls and so on. But it continues into... And people are signing up to volunteer, 100, 100 million people or 100,000, something like that. Oh, yeah, no. He, well, not 100 million. That would be great. 100,000. 100,000. <laughs> no, that would be a I like Trump with the billions and millions. I like to overemphasize. Yeah, no, but I mean, yeah, no. I, I, I heard crazy figures like apparently there were about 300 people per day signing up to volunteer and it went up to 30,000 instantly and something about how donations from tens of thousands of new people that hadn't donated so under age is, 35 are signing up like crazy exactly which is that's another topic by the way I'm trying to study that one because I heard you know Scaramucci this guy he's very insightful he he looks at numbers he looks at right. figures and he said that since 2016, there has been a big change in the demographics. Many boomers have passed away because boomers, you know, were getting older and so more boomers pass away. Especially but, from COVID. 
The other side of this is that there are more young people and the lethal figure is that since 2022, 8 million new young voters. And now the Harris campaign has put David Pluff in there, who used to be Obama's, you know, wingman, like one of the people that was running the campaign. This is a really clever guy who understands where the numbers are, and they're probably going to make a big push to get young people to vote. And I kind of went, thought, okay, well, if this is going on, can I see it in the charts, like the U.S. chart, Kamala's chart? It's there. I've already seen it. So this is one of the forces that is going to become a huge problem for Trump and the and the GOP. Oh, you he's, know he's going berserk right now. Oh, no. I he mean, absolutely. And hey. he's trying to sue them now because she stopped out of the race and he wants all the money he used to fight Biden. Too bad you should have waited for the convention. Well, yeah. And I mean, I've never, I've never seen a more despicable gaslighter as this guy. He's, you know, truthing in that fake thing of his. He's saying that how can something about Kamala facing a young man, he's referring to himself as a young man. Like, I mean, this is pretty funny. It's pretty funny. You, you have to admit, it's pretty funny. Like, what is this? Like, I'll head it off at the pass because now they're going to be saying that I'm the old guy. You are the old guy. You There's no getting out guy. of that, right? You're falling asleep at your convention. I mean, yeah, really. I mean, talk about like, hey, don't don't look at the truth. Just here, look, look around, whatever I say. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Hey, um, I wanted to also give some good news. Taylor Swift and yeah. Beyonce are going to do a big concert to raise money for her. And the DNC is announcing they've got all kinds of big names coming in. This It's going to be star studded. Yeah. You know, and by the way, uh, that thing that I posted in my recent video, which was my my insight around this, like I kept thinking, why is Trump doing so well in the midst of this period? Because it just didn't make sense. Now, of course, someone tried to kill him. There's that. We, we, let, let's you know. But and he also made now what appears to be the wrong choice of VP. So it's kind of coming back to haunt him. But the thing was, this thing is this planet that I've been studying for years trying to understand it better because it's a new discovery. It's a little bit like in the 1930s when Pluto was discovered. It took astrologers a while, you know, to figure out well, what is this planet doing? Same with Eris. Well, right on the Eris station that very day is when this thing happened when Biden resigns or, you know, drops the thing, uh, drops his bid, and Kamala comes in. That's the planet of, of a, you know, it's a woman energy and it is really, really bad in Trump's chart. It was, it, this was the thing I, I've said in videos, by itself, it denies him, you know, the election, all by itself. But it's very curious that it happened right then. And, you know, this is the whole idea. Astrology is the art of meaningful coincidence. How is it possible that it happened then? Well, it's possible because it mirrors exactly what happened. She's the figure. And it turns out on top of that is that in her chart, her moon is within two degrees of her ears is now. She represents that figure. Right. Clearly. Now, she's not the only one. People like E. Jean Carroll fall into that category. Judge Chodkin, all these different women that have been, you know, uh, coming after him in different ways. But Kamala Harris is right at the top of the list because now she's the the opponent. Right. So uh, another thing that you will see me make a video on at some point, because people keep saying astrologers, especially Trump's going to win because Jupiter's in his sign. That's their logic. Right. Okay, here's the problem with that logic. Yes, it's in his sign, and it's probably helping him to some extent. I mean, he's had quite a few breaks from judges and so on, delays. That's true. And he's still out there. I mean, he's competing. But Trump's son degree, this thing that they say, right? Trump's son degree is right near where Kamala's ascendant is. They're the same degrees. The problem is that he's got the Jupiter and everything else is crap. It's just really bad. Hers, she's got the Jupiter on the ascendant, and the rest of it is quite good. So oh, her wow. chart definitely defeats his, right? And there's more. I mean, the other thing that's really interesting about Kamala is she was born on a full moon, Aries to Libra. She's a Libra with an Aries moon, but very tight full moon. I mean, it was right on, like, you know, uh, in fact, you would have seen it in the sky because she's born in the at, at night, you know, like when the sun is set, you would have seen this really bright moon. That moon and that sun connect really, really well with the American moon, right? Oh, wow. Which immediately, 
you know, belies this whole thing. Oh, she's not popular. Just wait, give it time. You know, sometimes people are in the background for a period and then they emerge and they become really, really liked, right? So there are multiple points that, uh, multiple factors that point in this direction, right? But does this mean that she's going to walk away with it? No, it's going to be a, you know, bumping and grinding because you know what these guys do. It's just brutal, brutal the things they say, the racism, the misogyny, but it's super dangerous. It's super dangerous to approach it in this way because, for example, women are already really irritated by what happened with the Supreme Court and they're going to be on the lookout, you know, for yeah. this kind of thing. And, you know, these guys, these these bros, which, you know, the, the GOP is the, the party of bros, they think they're in the 1950s. We're not in the 1950s. It doesn't work like that, right? So, yeah. you know, yeah. And also very racist. Well, very yeah, racist. of course, of course. Yeah. They don't say it out loud, but they, they are definitely. Uh, somebody on Fox News called her or something colored use that word colored which i don't i haven't heard in so long mm. anyway so uh i i just want to bring this up you guys i had it in my community page but you would remember i was just as shocked as everybody that biden was going to step down that that he decided but i also felt relief which is weird like mm -hmm. oh good so he doesn't have to fight this battle anymore because i was worried about him and my son, he says, Mom, I'll vote for him. But I got to tell you, every time I see him speak, I hold my breath because I worry about him making a gaffe. It was very hard to watch him. So then when she came in, I was like, whoa. So check this out. Because people were like, How? you said Biden. And it's true. The cards were fantastic. But it was fantastic as far as the, the outcome. The outcome was going to be good, but for years, there's two things I've been saying for years. One is a woman would take Trump down. And mm -hmm. there was a lot of emotion behind it. That's why I thought it would be his daughter or a family member would backstab him. But can you imagine a strong, smart black woman beating him out? That's even worse than Biden for him. Well, you know, and the thing is, can you think of anything more insulting, anything more devastating to the MAGA movement? Because this is the exact thing that they most hate, right? Yeah. This, is what they're, this is what they're about. They're basically, you know, a bunch of racists. I'm sorry, that's what they are. That's what they, they are. Plain and simple. They, or they, but even against women. They, yeah, misogynist. Okay, calories. sorry. Right, both. Racist and misogynist. Exactly. The dual, you know, the... the the dynamic duo thing, yes, absolutely. So and both also the other, the other thing I told you, which you will remember, I kept thinking Biden would win a second term and maybe one to two years into the second term. And I said this out loud. Mm -hmm. I saw him handing the baton to Kamala. And mm -hmm. I said she will be the first female president of the United States. Mm -hmm. And then people were like, what are you saying? Only He'll only be in for... I said, I don't know. I keep seeing him hand it to her. Yeah, and yeah. So that happened. It just didn't happen. He only right. served one term, but she'll take on what would have been his second term. Yeah, it just happened sooner. So the guys that. were correct, you know, because I saw she'll be the first female president of the United States. Mm -hmm. That's when they were saying Biden doesn't have a chance of winning. I'm thinking, yeah, he does because I saw Kamala being the president. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that's uh, that's uh, yeah. And and. Uh, and you know, I mean, of course, with all these things, time will tell. And I have to say something else here, too, that that there's a lot of Uranus energy in this election cycle, you know, moving around, affecting the U.S. chart. And so Uranus, Uranus's way of operating is you get shocks, you get these things that yeah, you wow. were saying that. Yeah. Okay. So we've already had three shocks. Even the Biden debate was a shock because we none of us expected it to be that bad. So then that's a shock. Then that's followed by someone tries to kill Trump. That's the second shock. The third shock was a Biden leaves the race. There is a strong chance there's going to be more coming, okay. right? For example, don't underestimate these guys, they may throw, they might throw Vance out and try to put Nikki Haley in or some kind of thing if they suddenly realize, uh-oh, this is going south like crazy, right? 
Uh, that or some other thing. I mean, the convention for the Democrats is still a bit, it's a very Iranian period around that time. And it may be something to do with them or something to do with the Republicans, but it has something to do with the race. And so we have to keep that in mind as well, right? That yeah, this may not be totally settled. Here. Yeah. Right. But I, I anchored, you know, even though I'll admit I, I was feeling, you know, a bit down after the situation with with Biden, whenever I would think, oh, geez, like, is this thing totally wrong? I, I would just refocus and think, how can a chart like Trump's win an election? It just doesn't make any sense to me. I know that there are astrologers that really believe this. Some of them using the same techniques as me. That just seems really strange to me. And some who bring in techniques that are, in my opinion, not the techniques you should be using at the top level. Not when the top level tells you that there's a problem. So that's the bottom line, right? And the but, bottom line, too, is Kamala's chart is excellent. Oh, no. Unquestionably, you know, unquestionably. So, uh, uh, well, let, let, let me put it to you a different way. If you want to illustrate why is her chart so good. I've said this so many times around Jupiter going through the ascendant. That is when Clinton was elected in 92 and Obama was elected in 08. People really like you then. <laughs> that is the truth. So it's like that, right? It means yeah. that's an ideal time to run. I, I think it's actually better than, uh, well, it's about equivalent to Jupiter on the sun for, for uh, Trump. But the problem for Trump is that his sun is opposing his moon. So when, when Jupiter is in one place, it opposes the other. It doesn't work nearly as well, right? And one of the things that it does when you trigger an opposition like that is that it makes you overconfident. What did he just do, right? He was convinced. He thought, hey, we got it it's in the bag. The yeah. So let's put Vance in there because we don't even need any more votes. We can just run up the totals with the base. Great. Now what do you do? What's your what what's your plan? Well, they're on? very upset with him because I guess in his book and everybody's talking about it, and this is for real. This isn't hearsay. He's talking about having sex with a couch. What? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, okay. are you are you serious? Something, and it's in his book, <laughs> and everybody's talking about it. Go to any of the social media, and everybody's laughing about it. That he actually mentioned that he had sex with a couch. Well, uh, yeah, that's not going to play well. That's not going to play well. Um, and they said he's flatlined. Did you look at his chart? Advances. Yeah, I did. It's just that I'm waiting for some confirmation on this time on that this is, yeah. um, you know, out there. The main thing I, with the time that is available, what it does is it, it, it's a chart that's very similar to Trump's, where you have a really elevated Uranus up at the top. But that's why he's also exposed. You know, having the Uranus there, he's exposed to some sudden turn that he's not expecting, you know, right. and by itself, it's not enough to to win something. You need other supporting energies, right? Well, I think Elon Musk wanted him. And then when the, he, he's going down so hard, Elon Musk said, no, I never said I was going to give Trump 43 million. Yeah, never... well, uh, uh, that, that's another story that, of course, people opine in all kinds of directions. The one that I saw that seemed somewhat credible is that Dems are really mad at, at uh, Elon Musk for good reason, and they're not buying those Teslas. Tesla stock is dropping like a, like a rock. So, and I think he probably realized uh, that it's bad for business. Who knows? I mean, Elon Musk is really losing his, his marbles, you know. He's really, uh, you know, kind of crazy, to tell you the truth. You know? Yeah, and, he's and a the genius, thing is, but he's a crazy genius. Yeah, and then the you know the where the planet whenever a person is the you know the cardinal energy, cardinal energy, uh, Cancer, Aries, Capricorn, Libra, uh, those signs are getting Saturn challenges next. So if you're acting crazy, it's probably not good. Let's just say that, right? So he okay. forms part of that group, like Alito and Thomas, you know, people like that. They're in the now, same. Have you taken a look at Netanyahu? Well, Netanyahu, remember I said it quite a few times that. He has this really major bump as we move toward the end of the year. The, the, the little trip that Pluto does comes back into Capricorn for a couple of months. That's not a good thing. It's likely to seal his fate. And one of the reasons would be because he probably wants a Trump presidency, you know, probably. Oh, that's right. Feeling. He's going to yeah. be at Trump's house tomorrow. Nobody's showing up except the repubes for his speech. 
But I think there's going to be a lot of marching and protests going on outside. I really do. I can feel it. Where? At Mar-a-Lago? At Washington. Oh, in Washington. Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know what? The, the, it, even his own people want him out. They want him out. Oh, no, for sure. For sure. For sure. He's, I, I see him on his last legs. It's just that, you know, things have to play out, right? Uh, right. It's like when people ask about Putin or Ukraine. These things don't happen overnight. You have to be patient. And uh, history shows you this, too. Many times, you know, look at the, the, all the footage of the Second World War. And, of course, then you say, oh, look, in 1945, that's when it ended. Things were pretty dicey in 43, 44. There was a lot of dicey, dicey energy. You didn't know exactly where it was going to turn out. But the flow... Yeah. The flow had changed, right? And then eventually it, it, it shows up, you know, in the, in the way you expect. Um, and that uh, Secret Service uh, chair that stepped down, I guess she gave a terrible, she, she went before Congress or whatever. Uh, apparently she did say that none of the, bu- there was no bullets found on the stage where Trump was. Well, apparently from what I hear, the more likely thing that happened there, there's no bullet. The bullet probably hit the uh, hit the uh, teleprompter, and the shards, the shards uh, uh, hit it. But you know, but it's just that a bullet is a better story. You know, and Trump is always looking for the story, right? But yeah, well, secret- his ear grew back. I don't know if you've seen the latest picture, but his ear grew back because remember he said it was cut in half. But, but he can grow it back. The doctors said they've never seen anything like it. Yeah, right. No, I mean, look, the Secret Service, though, quite honestly, where you see that they're not, they're not used to these situations because they don't happen that often, right? But one of the things that, if you think about it, uh, Joe Scarborough focused on this because he was counting the number of seconds that Trump had his head exposed. And he counted about 10 seconds. The way to deal with that is you tackle the guy. If you're in the Secret Service, you knock him to the ground. You never leave him standing up there like that. So they totally blew that. He wanted to do the thing, right? No way. You, you move in. Joe Scarborough was saying there's a five foot something woman standing below him. And you see his head, you know, it can be blown off if there's yeah. someone shooting. So it was really, really bad. You know, they should yeah. have at least knocked him down and, you know, but then they also didn't didn't uh, see the shooter uh, up on the roof, and you know the, I don't know if you saw Lawrence O'Donnell. He was explaining that if you look at the I history of the Secret Service, they've been given way too many passes. You know, whenever there have been shootings, and then they'll say, "Oh, okay, well maybe we shouldn't have presidents in open cars." Sounds like yeah. a pretty good idea. And then now, the same people, two presidents were shot at, Ford and Reagan, and that uh, Secret Service guy ended up staying for. 10 years, right? Exactly. And and now now the Secret Service is telling Trump, you shouldn't be doing any open rallies. Really? Okay. So... <laughs> well, well you know Trump... why he does open rallies? Because it's yeah. too expensive to do indoor rallies. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He'd rather yeah. everybody stand out in the sweltering heat and pass out. Yeah, but you're exposed. Yeah, because it's much harder to cover the, the territory, you know, especially with all those high-powered rifles that are out there. You could have a person really far away and you may not know you mean but yeah. who knows i mean maybe you catch it maybe you don't so yeah it's it's super dangerous um Ivec, uh, IV, Iviek said isn't trump having among other active indicators solar arc mercury conjunct saturn active on election day feeling down that day reality versus state of mind uh no that's not true because okay I mean, just visualizing his chart, the solar arc Mercury, if you think where it is at birth, he, his solar arc Mercury conjunct Saturn happened to him when he was uh, at, uh, 14 years old. He, as, no, it's solar arc at Mercury somewhere else. But I'll say this about solar arcs. His solar arcs are the solar arcs of a loser because I know the solar arcs. I remember, I remember putting up that video more than once and showing solar arcs going into 2028, 2029 that were no good at all. He's in the midst of them now. You know, he's right okay. there. So, yeah, if you're looking for solar arcs, it's like this. Thumbs down. Okay. And personal said most astrologists are saying the chart for the 2024 election is chaotic due to Pluto. There's also Mercury retrograde at the time. 
uh, well, Pluto is because it's near the return, but the cha the chaos to me, because Pluto has been there, you know, for quite a yeah. while now, we've been dealing with it. But the real problem, I think, is Uranus, because Uranus is challenging the US moon this year at election time. So there's that. There's also Eris. But see, Eris, Eris is really interesting. Eris is the force of women moving in, right? And that's another indicator that that's part of the chaos. Because, you know, these guys are not going to like this. They are not going to like this one bit. They're going to be very, very angry. This is this really offends, especially these, you know, these Nazis that are in Nashville. I don't know if you heard about that. They're marching around. There's the we're kind of seeing a repeat of the 1940s when there were Nazis on the streets. You know, these people, oh, the Holocaust didn't happen, all that stuff. They are particularly against women having power. They don't like that. And a woman that's married to a Jewish man. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, that's what's going on. But uh, does that mean that they're successful? No. Does it mean it's easy? No, it's not. You know, we yeah. have to hold together. But again, I mean, if you think about this, there's no better revenge. You know, if you're a, if you're on the Democratic side, it's the biggest revenge you could have is Kamala Harris as president. It's better than Biden, really, because it sends a message to the world. I mean, you know, people say, oh, the U.S. is a backward country, you know, all of this. Well, we elected Obama in, in 2008, you know, right. and now, right. you know, in between, I know, in between we had a, a, a major... <laughs> <laughs> I made your fall back. <laughs> Boy, and Obama came in like a firestorm. It was wonderful. Georgia, he got Georgia. He got, mm -hmm. it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, very true. But, you know, um, the young people, the women, they're combining together and they're saying, hell no. It was mm -hmm. already starting, even with Biden in, because women were mad about Roe versus Wade. Yeah, exactly. This is the thing. You and I have been saying this repeatedly that this is Kamala's time because of that. Well, she can center herself on that issue and they have no answer. Even if you put in Nikki Haley, what answer do you have? They're going to start yeah. saying things like, well, you know, the states and this and that. No, no, this is not cool. You know, you got I, I would throw it in their face. You guys are now being assisted by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court would not even firmly say that it was okay with the pills. They left it kind of hanging, you know, so they could come back at you later and take them out. And you put a Republican government in there and they're going to remove it. And they're going to say, yeah. figure it out for yourself. So no, absolutely terrible idea. You know, yeah. Um, you know, Nikki Haley is putting a cease and desist of her back because they're all going to vote for Kamala. And she's trying to do a cease and desist on them. Like they can't make a choice because they're part of her back. Yeah, they can make a choice. Yeah, well, she's she's completely, I think she's destroyed her career because, uh, you know, I mean, it used to be, remember about 20 years ago, how being a flip-flopper was supposed to be bad for you? I mean, now it's like the, the, the more you flip and flop, the more the Republican Party likes you, you know? Like yeah. J.D. Vance, J.D. Vance, I mean, he, used to, he was calling Trump Hitler. He was calling him like a bad drug on the people. He was saying, you know, he's a terrible person. Now he says the opposite, just like that. And Nikki Haley. Oh, Nikki, you know, and Nikki Haley and um, uh, what's his name, Graham? Oh, Lindsay, yeah. Lindsay, Lindsay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all of them. The, uh, uh, Marco, we, we, all of them. Yeah. Ted Cruz. So listen, did you happen to take a look-see at the new VP? Will it be someone like Mark Kelly or Shapiro? Okay, so there, uh, first of all, there's limited data. The only chart that I have so far is Andy Bashir, the Kentucky uh, governor. But the little, the, the glance that I uh, took, uh, to me, Shapiro's chart looks a lot better than Kelly's, the guy okay. from Pennsylvania. That chart looks like a possibility. I have a feeling like it would be him, but I do like Kelly a lot. Yeah, I mean Kelly. Kelly, I not, by the way, I don't have the, the I have the birthday, but not the time for Kelly or for Shapiro. Okay. But just at a glance, Shapiro's looks a lot more like the kind of chart that, that you would see. That, 
that's a Pennsylvania thing. So that worked. Now, the other guy they were thinking about was the guy from Kentucky. That's Bashir. Bashir? Right. Yeah, and this is pretty our good. Our girlfriend, Lisa, you know, the one that helps us all out with the show, she lives in Kentucky. Let me tell you something. She was so upset because, you know, it's amazing he got in there. Just leave him be. Don't take him out. You know what I'm saying? I understand what she's saying. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing that usually, maybe not always, because again, we're in a, a year of surprises. So maybe a big surprise would be, uh, actually, I have to look at his a little closer, Buttigieg uh, or, oh, I love Buttigieg. or I someone love like uh, Gretchen Whitmer. But my feeling is that she'll probably, provided that she has a good relationship with the person, you know, that, that isn't really important, but not that, yep, I have to study a little more, but if you get a state where it's close, it helps, you know, to put a person that is very popular. Yeah. In that state. I think that's part of the reason they choose it. Not because Buddha just, he's comfortable in his spot right now. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, there's so many people out there already screaming that a black woman's running. Can you imagine with a gay man? It, it, I think it, it would be, they'd be passing out. Well, and the thing is, that's another thing in Kamala's chart because the, Jupiter transit on her ascendant, which is really good for her, that planet rules the marriage house, the relationship house. So that's your partner. So that also would suggest picking a really good partner that adds okay. to the thing. So I think that's covered as well. You know, okay. she's got it. She's got it under control, I think. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, what was I going to ask? We did about Kelly and Shapiro. There was one other thing that was hanging on my mind. Oh, uh, Patty wants to know about the new moon on August 4th in the sign of Leo. What will the energies be like? Is this a fresh step away from the energies of the most recent full moon in Capricorn? Well, I mean, it's always, you always get changes. Uh, but if you're looking at energy getting kind of intense, it's in the middle of the month and toward the convention because there are a number of um, aspects in the sky and then the convention happens on a full moon, triggering Uranus. That whole period is really, really intense. New moon in Leo. I mean, yeah, it's a switch. And it, I, I would say that might be like a little oasis, you know, in between what, what we just yeah. experienced. And then the energy will build up again uh, really intensely. And the other thing, too, is that all these things apply to the energy of the whole country, but they don't tell you how people react. So that's why I'm always saying to people, whatever's going on, Train yourself to stay calm, you know, if you let it uh, get under your skin, then you won't feel good and it'll have effects on your chart, you know, which yeah. you don't want it to. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing. Yeah. And you're a Capricorn, right? Yes, I am. How's your life going? Okay. Uh, yeah, pretty well. I mean, my for me, the, the, the Biden thing, this is a bit ironic in that I, I both underestimated the effect of Saturn for him, but part of the clue should have been that Saturn was uh, challenging me, not to my sun sign, but to other planets. Yeah. And S Saturn is merciless, you know, it just has this way of uh, coming in and the way it treats you is, I'll, I'll hit you with a two by four, see how that feels, and then you can avoid yeah. it next time. It's just no fun at all. Yeah, but overall, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, you know, uh, it's, it's fine. Yeah. So did you happen to take a look at Mike Johnson? No, him I haven't looked in a while. No. Okay, but, we'll look later for next time. Yeah, well, also too because he's another one of those with, without a time. Remember that we were, you and I talked about Mike Johnson, uh, back when he was new, and yeah. you had said you. I remember you texting me saying, "What is this guy? Because what are you getting? Because I'm sensing he's kind of in the middle. He seems to be more moderate." Both well, sides, yeah. Right. So the thing with him is that even though, if you look at the outward way he behaves he sounds like a which he is he's like a christian nationalist with you know all these very very retro ideas but his actions have been middle of the you know because he defied he his own deal with the president for uh, uh yeah yeah and he countered trump on ukraine he funded he, he put ukraine through so that's the way he's he's actually that's the effect of mike johnson the fact that he other than that is, you know, obviously a terrible leader, just like McCarthy and all the rest of them. Sure, but that's not, 
that's not the sum total of what he's done. I think in, in a way he was really helpful to, to, to Biden Harris because he put the Ukraine thing through, which Trump didn't want, right? So No, and that's when Marjorie Taylor Greene wanted him out. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, I'd be so glad when we're done with all that stuff. I yeah, really well, think we're going to win good. I really do. I Maybe it's wishful thinking, but I feel good news. I feel Roe versus Wade gets codified. I feel that Supreme Court's going to be given a what for. Yeah, no, and by the way, I mean, this is the thing about changing patterns, right? So, so um, my feeling is with the election is that, is that, uh, this is not a smooth win and that it's almost impossible to believe that Trump or even whoever would be there. Imagine that Trump doesn't make it for whatever reason. They'll probably try to litigate and they'll create some form of chaos right around it. So I would be totally amazed if, you know, the election is like a regular election where like How 2016. How about if she wins by a landslide? Uh, yeah, but do you do you sense that? Because that seems it has to be a landslide. In for in order for it to work, in order no, for it not order to be for challenged, them not to be able to challenge it. Yeah, right. Well, and I see a, him getting a lot of news beforehand that he's way behind. That's possible. That's possible. Just like like for example, you know, one of the things that could definitely happen now, very soon, is that. Right now, we're moving into the zone where it's good for Jack Smith. But it's also the zone where uh, Eileen Cannon, among others, could get a rebuke because the Saturn is somewhere in there. I don't know the exact thing because the time is not known, but near her moon. And one of the things is with Saturn is when you exceed your boundaries, which this woman is doing constantly, doing this weird thing where she wants to create her own rules. And so then the Saturn comes in and says, no, because you're trying to defy the order. So. There could be multiple developments coming up, you know, including that, by the way, the other thing, too, is there is still the threat of that in September of the um, of uh, Trump's, um, uh, you know, sentencing. Right. And uh, that could because September energy is not good for him okay. not good at all, including the day of the debate. Not good. Right. But that may not happen. We don't know yet because right oh, he now, already said he's not going to debate. Kamala. Well, that'll depend on where his polls are. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so, right. Yeah. So, I mean, the oh, only thing, the only caveat, again, I'll repeat this because it's really important. Uh, you can't talk about a planet like Uranus and say, well, look, see, it rules the unexpected. So I'm, uh, but how do you predict it then? That's the whole point. It shocks you by bringing in something you didn't expect. So I don't think this is settled yet. I don't think it's going to be a smooth ride where everything we're seeing today, you know, there is Trump and Vance and there's Kamala and question mark and that's just kind of flowing i'm not sure about that okay i think we'll we'll probably see one or two more whoppers you know things okay. that so wow amazing you know well i have a strong feeling that uh, well i'll tell you they're not going to have to worry about money especially with uh uh beyonce and taylor swift doing a show but i have a strong feeling that and i could be wrong but next time we meet i want you to look at sally yates chart sally gates or Susan Yates, Sally Yates, for which, which uh, person is this? This for the uh, oh, uh, attorney general. Remember, they were thinking of her, but Biden put in Merrick Garland because he owed him a favor because of what they did to him. Is that? I mean, is, is that the woman that resigned? Or Susan Yates? Is she the one that was part of the Obama administration? Yes. The one that Trump fired because she started going to Congress and and. Uh, Telling the truth, yeah. Telling the truth, her. Okay, yeah, I'll take a look. I, I, so take a look at her because part of me, all of us were all excited thinking, oh, do you think she'll pick J Jack? And this is the hit I got. I could be wrong, but I felt that Jack is totally focused on getting Trump. And once this whole thing passes and, and the, the new administration is one he can work with, he's going to be focused on taking him down. And that he doesn't want to be attorney general because then he's got to deal with everything else. Yeah, that's very possible. And that's I felt like possible. a female. What maybe it's not her, but I felt a female taking taking. Yeah, a, well, I mean, you know, by the way, that that could be the 
in a way, the summary of all this is that is that this we've talked about for years that the the power of women is rising, and these guys, in a way, are making it happen through their policies. They're doing yeah. things that enrage women. Women vote in bigger numbers. They tend to work together and and stick it out and follow through. And you see that in the iris, iris in the sky, right now, going into this election is directly challenging at one of the U.S. chart planets. And that tells you it's there as a force. Yeah. Very, very likely you see woman president, you see, you know, more and more women already. This has been growing for years. You know, the pre and it's because of it's because of Trump. Trump's greatest yeah. achievement is he has brought more women into power. That's what he's done. <laughs> I know. That's, what, that that's what they'll say in history, you know. Aside from saying he was the worst. Oh, and that twenty scoundrel. That, that twenty twenty five, it's like you, you want to remove women from voting and oh my god, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. That's Alito's theory. Alito's theory of the case is that women should be in the kitchen. You know, they say that in in Project Twenty Twenty Five. They say, you know, that basically let's go back to the nineteen fifties, you know, when when men could could be, you know, anything from disrespectful to abusive and get away yeah. with it. No, the world has moved on. It's too hard to do stuff like that. And that, by the way, that's a great line that Kamala is adopting. I'm for the future. This guy's for the past. He just looks back. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So. But yeah. uh, I'm feeling excited. I got to tell you, I really, I was shocked about Biden, but I felt a relief too, which was weird. I just think it's all going to work out as, as it should. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, this, this could fit one of the things that I was seeing in, in Biden's chart, because I was looking at the situation and wondering, okay, is he going to stay and is he going to, is he going to leave? And the longer he was able to stay in going into August, that Saturn would move away, right? So then I remember I had said, if you wait enough, then they'll start saying like they did earlier in the year, oh no, he's not old, he's just really wise. Well, the thing is that's now right at election time in November, Saturn is placed where people will say, yes, this guy was the the wise old man, instead of saying he's just an old man who's lost it, right? But it fits in that I'm sure Biden, I'm 100% sure he wants Kamala to win. And I think eventually at some point he will say this was the right decision, you know, that he realized oh, it was, yeah. it was, and it was the right way to go. And he will be looked upon as one of the greatest presidents ever. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and yeah. she will keep on with a lot of the things that he really wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. But those rich people are nervous. They're oh, nervous. Yeah, well, well, I mean, they're nervous, but what are they nervous about? That they got to pay a little more tax. I mean, come on. It's not that you... bad. Even Buffett said it's not that bad. He said, I pay less tax, less tax than my secretary. Yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, it's not. And if, if Trump got in, if you are middle class, you're going to pay 2500 and something more in taxes a year. That's bull. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. I call bull pucky. Okay, well, my friend, it was wonderful talking. All right. Fun as always. We'll resume soon. I'm sure the way We're this is going. We're going to have a lot of things to go we'll, over. We'll have more to talk about. All right. Bye, everyone. Till next Bye, time. Bye, guys.